Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Brooke Roll. All right, today is March 31st. We are officially eight days away from the great solar eclipse that's coming through the middle of Texas. I have been waiting for this for four years and uh, I'm hoping that everything's gonna work out in terms of being able to do a live stream for that. Uh, right now I'm concerned because they're predicting rain on that day, but I also know that the weather predictions a week in advance here in Texas are very rarely accurate. It may be overcast and that may still ruin our uh, solar eclipse viewing uh, opportunities, but uh, in the offset, on the off chance that things do get better and the uh, sky clears up a little bit and we can see something, I need to be ready to go live. And if I'm gonna go live in the yard, um, I need to do a little setup because right now the problem I have is the modem that I have and the router that allow me to do all my wireless stuff, it's in the living room. But if I'm gonna be in, if I'm gonna be live streaming outside in the yard for where the best view of the solar eclipse is gonna be, I'm gonna have to be in a section of the yard a long ways away from the router and that's gonna cut down my internet signal. So what I wanna to do today is figure out a way where I can move the router and the modem out into the yard so they can be right next to me so I'll have a rock solid internet connection uh, for the live stream, assuming everything works. So I got some thoughts on that. We're gonna try and get that done and we're gonna end this video Video a little different from any other video because once I get everything hooked up I'm actually gonna go live for a few minutes and uh, test it make sure we got a good connection make sure everything's working and rock solid and uh, so you know this is gonna be the first video I've ever done where I start off doing pre-recorded stuff and then end up doing a live stream so uh, since you're probably gonna see the live stream first this is gonna be a prequel to that so let's get going so if you've ever watched the live stream, this is sort of the, view, the setup that I have. I have the laptop in front, I'm sitting on the couch here, and then of course I have the Texas flag on the wall behind me. And I do all right with that because my modem and my router are right here. And so the modem and router are, you know, 10 feet away from where I am broadcasting from, so I always have a good rock solid connection. The problem is, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be way, way, way out here. Way out in the yard. And I'm going to have to go to the area where the trees aren't. So I can't do it here because there's trees over me and that will block the, uh, the uh, view of the sky. However, this part of the yard over here by the garden and over by Flash is the ideal spot to view the uh, solar eclipse because this is about the time of the day the solar eclipse will be happening. Uh, so the sun is right there, it's covered up by the clouds. So this would be a great place to set up and, uh, and uh, you know, view this and have uh, the solar telescope up and all that. But I'm gonna get a horrendous internet signal out here because I'm out in the backyard and I got a brick wall between me and the modem. And I've tried doing it. I've uh, actually successfully done live streams from kind of this location here back up against this wall, but it's just too far over here to do that. So what I want to do is I want to bring the modem and the router out here, set them on like a TV tray right here so that I can sit there, do my live stream, and still have a rock solid connection. Now that should not be terribly difficult. All I need to do is route power out here and route the signal from the cable company which is my internet service provider out to this location and i've got plenty of extension cords so the power isn't going to be an issue but routing the the signal out here um, is going to require me uh, stringing a coax out here and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run over to home depot see if i can find a hundred or 150 foot long coax cable and that will allow me to move everything out here so that's my first step we're going to go to home depot and get a coax cable all right, I'm back from Home Depot. I actually got two coax cables. Uh, I couldn't get a 150 foot one. I got a 100 foot one and a 50 foot one. Now it's entirely possible I'll be able to do what I need with just the 100 foot cable. So we may only end up using that one. 
But if I need to go somewhere else further deeper into the yard, I got the uh, 50 foot cable that I can connect to it and a couple of barrel connectors that'll help me connect them together. I'm going to route this out into the backyard. We're going to put some power about there uh, and we're going to try and uh, get the modems running out there and let's see what happens. Now fortunately tapping into the cable system is going to be fairly simple because I already have the cable coming out of the wall here going up to this little impedance uh, splitter. And at one point uh, when I first set up the entertainment system here I had it split off because I had cable TV and I had my cable modem and so this wire went to the modem this one went over to the cable system well ever since I, re I got rid of uh, cable TV I disconnected the connector that's here so I have a free connection uh, here that I can just tap into and that'll uh, allow me to route my cable back out to the backyard and fortunately, the 100 foot cable seems to be long enough to get me out to where I need to be, which is going to kind of be this location here. I think I'll probably set up the telescope and probably the laptop and the camera we're going to shoot from and the modem and router on this table. So I think the next thing I got to do is get power out here and let's start hooking stuff up. All right, so I got everything kind of assembled out here. I uh, strung an electrical outlet out here and hooked it up to a power strip. Um, I got the modem and the router plugged in. I got the telescope out even though it's our overcast and we really can't see anything. I have my cell phone camera which we're going to use for the broadcasting and then I'm, I have my laptop out here with a mouse and I'm actually going to follow along with a live stream on this because I have I have really bad eyes and I don't get a good enough con uh, vision of what's going on, especially under bad uh, lighting conditions like there's going to be outside. So that's going to be solely for broadcasting. This is going to be solely for me watching what's going on and, um, you know, responding and seeing comments and stuff like that. And uh, now it's just kind of up to figuring out if we can pull this off. Now, I tried doing a live stream on this camera before uh, when I was in California that day I went to the beach and had my nephew jumping in the in the frigid cold water just because he felt he needed to do that and for some reason I couldn't get the camera to auto orient uh, so basically the only way I could broadcast was holding the camera like this and I don't like uh, that because then you end up with the black bars on the left and right I want to go and uh, do this letterbox uh, so that you get the full widescreen experience so that's the first thing I got to figure out how to do is to make this thing go live uh, and keep the audio auto orient. I know that's got to be an option because I used to be able to do it on an old camera. So it's just got to be a setting in there and I'm just going to dig through it and trying to figure that out. So I'm going to spend a little time with that and, uh, and then we're going to try and go live on this and see what happens. So I dug into some of the settings on here and I figured out how to reverse the orientation so now I can shoot it this way and this should work well. So we're going to do our first test right now uh, in just a couple of minutes. What I want to do is give a few people a chance to get on here and uh, so that when we start there'll actually be somebody in here. And so what I did is I set it up so uh, I scheduled it where I'm going to start it in about five minutes. So I'm going to let that time click by here and uh, in five minutes we're going to start a live stream and we're going to run it for about 15 minutes and we're going to see what happens. Wish me luck. All right, so we had a successful take. It took me a couple of attempts to get going. The first time I did it, um, I ended up broadcasting most of the, the screen of my cell phone with a little teeny tiny dot in me in the middle of my broadcast, but I still was unable to get it landscape versus portrait orientation. So I started digging a little deeper into the menus and I found an advanced setting that allows me to go uh, horizontal or versus vertical. They recommend vertical primarily because you're broadcasting a little bit less data, especially when you're going over a cell network. But since I was connected to my Wi-Fi, um, I elected to go with the uh, horizontal or uh, widescreen mode and it worked really well. Like I said, it took about three or four attempts to get it going because apparently every time you start and stop the live stream all the settings revert back to their normal setting but once I got it going uh, we got a good live stream and we were on for 15 16 17 minutes I actually uh, was able to 
disconnect the camera from the power supply and walk all over the yard and uh, kind of demonstrate that I can basically live stream from the entire yard with this setup. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that's a neat little feature. Uh, one of the things I knew was going to be a bit of an issue was that um, I wasn't going to be able to broadcast at full high def. Um, for some reason, uh, they don't let you live stream, at least not on my cell phone, at full high def. It's a uh, 780 by 1024 or something like that. So it's like half of uh, high def. But you'll still end up getting uh, a good view, I hope, of the solar eclipse. Assuming, of course, that the weather uh, cooperates. But we'll see. So um, I'm going to tear this all down, bring it all back into the house now. And... Uh, if we get lucky and the weather clears up on Monday, we will uh, go live on this and show you as much as we can. It's my goal, if the weather cooperates, is I want to be live the whole time. So you'll, you, if you're here, you'll see the uh, solar eclipse from beginning to totality to the end. And that should be, we should be on for several hours. So uh, check that out if you get a chance, but uh, until then, I think I'm done with this video. So thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.